Hi. So in this video, I'm going to talk about something I call make it. It's not something I invented or anything. It's uh, something that I, got, that I was inspired by uh, working at Luna. They have a tool called Shuttle that does multiple things. One of them is the same thing that I'm going to showcase here. Um, just implemented with make. It's super simple to implement. The reason why I did this is that we had a, uh, I made a post on LinkedIn describing how sometimes when we get one new thing, new leap forward in IT, then it's mostly a compromise. It's a positive compromise, you know. So CICD is a good thing, you know, but we also lost something. We lost a capability that I think is very important. So with this idea or framework or whatever you want to call it, we can get that capability back. So what did we lose? Well, when we added CICD, you know, we, we, we basically check every commit so every commit you do CI, if it passes the CI uh, stages, then it's good enough uh, to merge into main. And then we kick off CD, and if that goes well, then you have a releasable artifact, right? But before we had CI CD, someone would clone the repo and would run some scripts that would check, do the same thing basically. And at the end, they would have an artifact that they could then release into a production environment or test environment and so on. We usually do a code freeze or something if they're using CVS. But now with CICD, you can't really do that. So in most cases, CICD is implemented like where you put the functionality you need in the steps in the CICD system. So with Jenkins, it could be a a shared library or something or it could be in the steps that you actually code you know what it needs to do run this command then this command in this step that also means that you as a developer cannot run it locally on your laptop which is not really good so we talked a bit about it on linkedin and someone suggested that what they do is they put the step the code in scripts and then in the same repo so you could run it locally and the CI system could just run them from the repo. And that works nicely if you have a monorepo or a monolith. So the problem is if you have microservices, let's say 100, 200, 300, 500 microservices, then you have this code duplicated a lot of times and we don't want to do that either. So. It has been like a compromise where many people would just say, okay, then you need to push it again. So if you had, let's say, a security check in pipeline that failed, you would need to clone the repo, try to figure out why and what needs to be updated. And then you would need to push it back and wait for the pipeline to run again and get to the security stage and then get your feedback. Not really effective. So. With Make It, we try to do something else. We try to actually take all the complexity, the scripts basically, and put it in something we call a plan, a repository only for that. And then the CI system will use it and the developers from the service repo will also use it. But how can we tie these things together? And that's what I'll show today. So first I would like to show it from a developer's point of view. Here we have some code, we have a Golang microservice. It's super simple. It's just you know, a main function with two um, paths that it'll answer or reply on. So we have a hello and we have a header and we can then run it. But let's say we want to compile this. Um, the other thing we have is we have a borrow file because we don't we, we could run the commands ourselves, but we don't want to do that. Remember, we want to use the exact same thing that the CI system wants to use. So we have a Bora file, and Bora is Latvian means sale. So it's an internal project in um, Velux, where I work, where we are working on a release CLI called Bora. But make it will use the same YAML file. 
So here you can see we have a var section with some variables. And these describe the service. Now, this is a very minimalistic one. There will also be one a section describing the different uh, values for different environments. So if you're using Helm, imagine the, the values that you want to overload the default values with for each environment will be here. So you can create Helm releases for Flux. But that's a different video. But in this video, we have these things, name, the owner, registry information, and so on. And we have a plan defined. So the other thing is we have a make file. We'll get back to that to show how it works. And we have the readme file. So you can see here we can use make list. Hmm, let's try that. Make list. So here you can see I get a couple of targets and the location of these targets. And it says plan here, not local. And I don't have any scripts here or anything. And the make file is actually only have two targets. But now I have a .plan folder. So what it did was it went to borrow.yaml and then it cloned this git repo into .plan. And you can see here we have a script folder with scripts. So basically I can run these things. So let's say build. So I want to say make build. I want to build my Go code. Okay, so it clones the repo again. You can add skip pull true, then it'll not do it, which is really nice in CI. You only need to pull it at the first step, right? So now I have an app I can run, so I can do app. Now it's running. I can add another here and say curl local host 80 hello, and it'll reply back. So it works. Super. So now I've built my application and the command used for that is the same as the CI system will run. The CI system will also clone the repo, the plan, and run the same script. Now, what if I love this plan, but the build step is slightly different than what I need. So my Go code is maybe a bit special. So I want to opt out of the build step, but not the other steps like building the container and scanning it for security vulnerabilities. Those are fine. I just need to tweak as a developer for this one specific. I want to be able to opt out. Right? So for that, you can do make copy and then build or any step. So if you do that, you can see that we now have a script folder in the local service repository with a build step or build script. And this is actually a copy directly from the plan. And if we do local here, just to see that it's actually the local script that it runs, and then we say make build, we can see that it actually runs the local script instead. So with one command, I opted out and I got all the steps or all the code that is in the plan so I can tweak it. I don't need to do it manually or anything. So now I opted out. If I don't want to opt out, I could just you know delete the folder or the, the script, run it again, and it'll run it from the plan. So that's uh, basically the gist of it. There's more to it, but um, so, so we can do the skip pull thing, which is nice. So let's say there's something in the plan that doesn't work. There's a bug or something. You can actually fix it here. And then you can test it by adding the skip pull. So if we do make build a container, uh, we can give it an image tag. 1.2.5 or something, whatever we need to attack this with. So now cloning, exporting VAS, and then running the Go plan container build step, right? So now it'll build the container. Now we want to scan it. So make, scan, and the same image tag, of course. So now it's running the scan script from the plan, and it's actually using, in this case, um, Cystic. So it's downloading the database and all that stuff. So it will take a bit of time 
and I'll get a new folder called .scan here. So you can see I have some stuff here and I have the lock and everything. And then it actually checks the container that I just built for security vulnerabilities. And then it'll print out just the three worst categories and a link to the dashboard in Cystic. So that's very Cystic specific that I made this script. That's because we use that. So you can see I have one critical, 10 high, one, uh, four medium. Let's say I want to say, hmm, I need to fix this. So if I go to the plan container, there's a Docker file. You can see I'm using Alpine 3.15.5. So if I change this to nine, but if I just run it, it'll overwrite this file again because it's in the plan and it pulls the plan. So what I can do is I can do container build 2.5 and then I can say skip pull true. So here you can see it's skipping the clan plan clone and now it's building it with this. And then I can do scan and I don't need to skip it now because I have the container. It doesn't matter that it overwrites my Docker container, but just if I want to update the plan, then I can just skip plan true. And now it'll test it. Oh, I, ah, it cloned the plan anyway. I must have misspelled it or something. So now you can see I have zero, 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 zero. So if I, just fix this again. I can actually go into plan and say kit status. And I can actually contribute back to the plan directly from my service repo. I don't need to clone it somewhere else because it's already here. So that's nice. Another thing we did was that in the borrow file, you have a section here. So this section is going to be the same for all microservices in, in VLOX, well, most of them at least, right? So what we did was we created, a, in the plan, we created a plan.yaml, and you can actually use that. So yeah, I specified the same things, and I added this funny thing just to see that it actually added it. So I could actually remove these things from my Bora file, because then it'll use it from that. And the, the way it does that is that every script, so the build script here, source this init script. And the init script basically um, it, it takes the, the plan.yaml from the plan file and then it merges it with the Bora file. So I get all the values from the plan.yaml, but then it puts my Bora file on top of it. So I only get the changes or the things that doesn't exist in the Bora file from the plan. And then I can, then they'll just be exposed because the init file will then simply expose all these, um, so if we go here, there'll be an environment variable for all the things under VAS, and it'll be called service.name, service.owner, it'll be called registry.org, and so on. So you can use them. So if we go to the build container step, you can see here that I'm using them here. I'm using the image tag here and so on. That's how you can then use them in the scripts. So you simply run this in its script, that will make all this data from the, from the file and the plan available to you and then you can do your script so you don't need to do it in the scripts anymore so yes that's what i did and um, this way we can centralize things in a plan we can then use it in ci cd we can use it in our service repos all 300 of them if we want to and we can opt out on one step if we want to like the scan or build or whatever we want you can also just go to your local repo here and say scripts. And in here, I'll say hello.sh and say change module. Hello. And then I just need to add this line. So I need to add this because otherwise it will not uh, find it in the list command on the target. So here, very custom script. So now if I do make list, 
you can see I have a local hello script here that I can use. Yes. Now, if I want to opt out on the build step, it's just using the make copy build again, and then make list. You can see it also is listed here. So you can see exactly where it's using what. Yes. So that was my video, small, quick, dirty demo of make it a small POC. I'll put a link in the description and uh, I hope you liked it and hope we can have a discussion about this, how we can empower and enable developers to use centralized tooling, but also with the capability of opting out. Yes, thank you. See you in the future. Bye bye.